A grand introduction to Pokemon Sword and Shield serves as a neat tease of what's to come for your fledgling trainer, but the road there is just as appealing. I played the first 90 minutes of Pokemon Shield, and even though my adventure was barely beginning, I already felt like I had an interesting number of ways to spend my time, and each option was as enticing as the last. From challenging and rewarding max raid battles, to new ways to train and bond with my Pokemon, Pokemon Sword and Shield are set up to be the most ambitious games in the series. Here are some things I'm most excited about. For the first time ever, your rival Hop has two partner Pokemon, and you'll have to go up against both in your first battle. As usual, Hop chooses the starter with you, but he will also have a Wooloo to start off his team. That's not all for Wooloo, though. Wooloo is everywhere in the introduction, and you'll notice it as soon as you leave your house. Wooloo is even featured in one of the early story beats. Like many Pokemon fans, I loved Wooloo the instant it was revealed, but I was still surprised to see it take on such a prominent role at the start of the game. Wooloo is primed to be the unofficial Pokemon Sword and Shield mascot, and it's the perfect one given the setting. The way you'll find Pokemon in the wild is quite different from the other mainline games and allows players to better choose when they'll take on an encounter. Like in Pokemon Go, some Pokemon are visible in the overworld, and others appear as exclamation point icons in tall grass. The exclamation point encounters are random in that you don't know which Pokemon is there, but you can usually see and avoid the battle before it begins if you want. Some Pokemon can only be found through random encounters, which is a great incentive for players to run into the unknown. The wild area is a trainer's playground that you get access to fairly early on. This area appears to be the biggest we'll explore in Galar, and it's got plenty of unique features. This includes considerate things like being able to access your PC, where you store Pokemon who aren't in your party, directly from the menus while in the wild area, freely rotate the camera, and earn special currency called Watts to buy items like curry ingredients and camping gear from merchants in the area. Some items for sale are exclusively sold in the wild area. The wild area isn't quite as populated as I expected it to be, but it was neat to know that different Pokemon show up depending on the weather. Sections of the wild area can't be reached right away too, giving players more to explore later on. Local and online multiplayer allows players to battle, trade, visit each other's campsites, and work together in max raid battles in the wild area. Communication and teaming up with others is unfortunately a little limited since you can only ping your friends at one spot right outside the wild area. There's no voice chat either, and without seeing the details of my communication options, it's unclear how easy it would be to put all these ideas into practice. My hands-on time was strictly offline, so we'll have to see how well these ideas translate when the game comes out next month. I went into my first max raid battle with a mere level 7 Sobble and a team of 3 NPCs. You can't do max raid battles alone, and given how strong these Pokemon are, you wouldn't want to. We won the battle, but plenty of NPC Pokemon fainted in the process, and it took quite a few turns plus Dynamaxing to bring us to victory. Gigantamax Pokemon, a form available to certain Pokemon, can only be caught through max raid battles or received through special events. What appeals to me even more than hard to get Pokemon, though, is the spectacle of these fights. It's the kind of grandiosity that reminds me of Pokemon Stadium. Despite not getting to see things like camping and cooking in the wild area and Pokemon jobs, it still felt like something was always happening in the Pokemon Sword and Shield world, and I was right in the center of the action. The main stage isn't just a stage anymore, it's a stadium. This time around, Pokemon feels bigger than ever, Dynamaxing and Gigantamaxing aside. For more on Pokemon Sword and Shield, be sure to read the full preview article on IGN, and don't miss our videos on the new Gigantamax forms and our discussion on Ash's journey to become a Pokemon League champion.